Four. Oh, where'd you start? Um, a good game of football. I think there's lots of emotion in the game. Lots of talking points, decisions, good play, indifferent play, mistakes, and a draw. It's a fair summary, I think. How did you, we'll get to the red cards after, there was a local referee tonight. How, how yeah. do you view that? Is that, I mean, it's the first time we've seen a local right. ref do it yeah. in a league match. Okay. I think in history, in this, yep. uh, first night since the NSL 20 odd years ago. How right. Should that be an advantage if you have a local referee? I'll ask you. Yeah, no, listen, I, I, I've had a lot of my football in Canada and the US and living in Canada, managing in Canada. We always used to have Canadian refs and we didn't used to get the rub of the green against the American teams. So I'll leave that one with you. So you had no problems with it? Uh, listen, uh, last week, yes, I did. This week, you know, if... if the two yellow cards for the first red card for Adelaide, uh, there's been contact or there's, his decisions are yellow cards, then that's fair. My boy, I think, uh, Nata has got the wrong side. He, he's been reeled in by an experienced player, I believe. But it's a red card. He's the last man, so you've got no complaints on my red card. Um, you'll have to ask Carl on his red card, but nah, we, we deservedly were down to 10 men because that's just a, a naive decision from a very good young player who's played very well this season. Could have, should have. Uh, yeah, no. Yes, he could have. It was, you know, he set up our first goal. Uh, exceptional play, positive play. Um, he looked really bright when he came on, which was really important, as did Simon Cox. And it was a transition moment for us in the last minute, last kick of the game. And as a striker, as a player, you dream of those moments. I think the ball was driven into him from Wilmer, our left back who run all day. Uh, he needed to take a touch. Uh, he got it stuck under his feet a little bit, and the keeper obviously just gambled and. Uh, he hits it high. That happens sometimes. You know, you'll never hear me complain. I'm disappointed because we could have won it in the last minute. Would it have been fair or not? Don't know. Um, but I'll stick with Bernie. I'll stick with that group in there because my goalkeeper made mistakes today. My centre-back made mistakes getting sent off. My centre-forwards made mistakes by not holding the ball up. My centre-forward missed a chance. He made a mistake. So we're all in it together. Yeah, I thought you were good in the first half, but you didn't... Penetrate. Didn't yeah. We're good. We're good from point A to C, in between the both boxes. We're very good. And the boys commit to their work day in, day out of doing it. It's the hardest thing in football is putting the ball in the back of the net or the final third play. That's why you pay the big money for the big players. Uh, but also, in your own box, you've got to defend properly. Defend crosses, defend balls into those areas, clearances, headers. Do the... Uh, Ugly side of the game, I won't swear, the ugly side of the game. And we, we didn't do that well enough, and we haven't done that well enough in the last couple of games. Uh, and it cost us today with a cross into our six-yard box. So we're, we're good. We know we're good at, at those sort of areas, uh, but we do need to improve in, the, in, in both boxes for sure. Who Adelaide? Yeah. No, I, I wasn't because whenever you play against ten men, for some unknown reason in a footballer's mind, and we've all been there, think that we're playing against ten men. So you might not actually need to fully run or fully commit or fully tackle, and it's a mindset thing. So I, I reminded the guys at halftime: when you lose the ball, you've got to win it back straight away. If you win it back straight away, then you can rest when you have the ball. Um, we didn't do that in the first 10 minutes. Uh, and I said to them we needed to do that. They were going to have a period because that's what happens in football. Even when you're playing with 10 men, you do have a little bit of possession. They had their best period in the first 10 minutes of the second half. And, you know, we were lucky not to concede a second because that would have made it a big uphill fight for us. But eventually, as the game wore on and we, we get, got into the right areas and played in between people and managed to obviously get wide then with, with a couple of adjustments as substitutes. And we got a deserved equaliser. And then, obviously, the game changed again with the second red card. And you've got a lot of striking options at the moment, but it yep. feels like it's just a lot of inconsistency with performances. I mean, Bruce scores twice on yep. Tuesday, but then he missed a few tonight. <laughs> comes off the bench, scores, yep. but maybe hasn't been as good recently. How do you kind of work around that at the moment? Just fully commit to the players, uh, show them confidence, show them faith when they're playing well. and. I say this to my centre forwards, if, if, if two, you've got two centre forwards and one starts a game and one comes on and, and the, the one centre forward runs for 65 minutes and gets no chances and the second one comes on for 25 minutes and scores two goals, which would you rather be? 
And it's not a trick question, it's actually reality of football. You can have more chances in the last 20 minutes than you can in the first 60, but players want to start. So the objective is to try and get those players playing for 90 minutes and having as many chances as we can. Um, Brucey, you mentioned Brucey there. Brucey scored two goals on Tuesday night. He should have scored two goals today, by the way. He's missed two probably easier opportunities for what he scored the other night. So he's just in a good vein of form at the moment. Coxie got his goal when he came on. Bernie looked bright. Juki put in a shift and Kwame came on at the end as well. So I'll need all my options going in for the last running for the last part of the season. This is the second game in a row you've uh, taken a point away from the top, two, uh, top three teams. Um, so do you think that gives a lot of confidence going forward into that last part of the season? It should do. Yeah, without a doubt, but we're disappointed in there. And that shows how far that group has come because if you go away from home, it's always nice to try and get something out of the game, but we're disappointed we've drawn the game. Um, you know, sometimes people want to run before they can walk, but it's important you put building blocks, foundations in when you are trying to build, and that's what I'm trying to do since the day I walked in the door. But we've made really, really good strides in such a short space of time, but still got a lot of work to do. Um, but yes, they should be showing confidence, playing against the two of the top three teams uh, and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Is Troy seen coming off tactical, or you couldn't stay on the booze for another three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought they gave him a bit of rough treatment today. I thought there was a couple of challenges, which is happens. We, we we played Central Coast and they done it to Ziggy and we played Newcastle and done it to Bernie. It's part and parcel of football. It's what brings fans out. They want to see that emotion and passion. And when former players return to their old teams, obviously there's that extra little bit of spice. But no, just made it because I wanted to get an extra body in, uh, higher up the field to play two centre forwards, go into a 4-4-2 simple formation. And that's all it was. I didn't hear the booze. I didn't hear the booze. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> he's, he what? Sorry. He did. Nah, he's a very good player, Jimmy. Yeah, well, we're delighted to have him. He's a he's a really good pro as well. Uh, he's a character. Uh, he's a leader. Uh, but he's a really good pro and good person to have in your locker room, without a doubt.